வணக்கம் வெல்கம் டு திஸ் செஷன் ஆஃப் த ஹேண்ட் சர்ஜரி குவிஸ் த ஃபன் வே டு லேர்ன் ஹேண்ட் சர்ஜரி த ஃபர்ஸ்ட் கொஸ்டின் who among these is considered the founding father of hand surgery norman t kirk sterling bunnell j william littler benjamin fowler and the answer is sterling bunnell some interesting points about sterling bunnell the californian surgeon his first publication was repair of tendons in the fingers and description of two new instruments in the journal surgery gynecology obstetrics way back in 1918 this article was accepted after 18 resubmissions during the world war 2 dr norman kirk bunnell's friend was appointed by president franklin d roosevelt to the post of army surgeon general of the united states of america he in turn asked his friend and colleague sterling bunnell 62 years old at that time to establish a series of centers for surgery of the hand and bunnell achieved this in 2 years simultaneously sterling bunnell completed his enduring magnum opus surgery of the hand bunnell's true innovations were biological rather than technological he created starting with himself a new species on this planet the homo chirurgicus otherwise known as the hand surgeon question number 2 the dorsal boundary of the thenar space in the hand is formed by adductor pollicis muscle oblique septum from the skin to the third metacarpal the first lumbrical muscle first dorsal interosseous muscle and the answer is a adductor pollicis muscle we shall now see a cross sectional anatomy of the palm to understand the boundaries of the thenar space anteriorly we have the tendons of the flexor pollicis longus the flexor digitorum superficialis and profundus of the index finger and the first lumbrical muscle posteriorly it is bounded by the adductor pollicis muscle on the radial side the thenar space is limited by the insertion of the adductor pollicis into the proximal phalanx of the thumb and on the ulnar side is the oblique septum from the skin to the third metacarpal question number 3 the littler's fixed unit of the hand consists of the following except the proximal carpal row the distal carpal row the second metacarpal the third metacarpal and the correct answer is the proximal carpal row which does not form a part of the littler's fixed unit question number 4 keralgia paresthetica is a condition which involves the following nerve the intercostobrachial nerve or the palmar cutaneous branch of the median nerve or the dorsal cutaneous branch of the ulnar nerve or the superficial branch of the radial nerve the answer is superficial branch of the radial nerve this condition is otherwise known as the wartenberg syndrome when this superficial branch of the radial nerve is trapped between the tendons of the brachioradialis and the extensor carpi radialis longus in the distal portion of the forearm there is pain elicited along the dorsum of the hand which is known as the wartenberg syndrome this occurs especially during pronation repetitive wrist flexion and ulnar deviation question number 5 percutaneous trigger release may have the highest rate of iatrogenic nerve injury in which of the digits the thumb index finger ring finger or little finger
and the correct answer is the thumb. The chance of injury is more in the thumb as the digital nerves to the thumb are closer together to the midline and to the A1 pulley of the thumb and hence more prone for injury. Question number 6. To what is the high risk of non-union after treatment of a proximal pole scaphoid fracture attributable? Volar entry of anti-grade blood supply into scaphoid, volar entry of retrograde blood supply into scaphoid, dorsal entry of anti-grade blood supply into scaphoid or dorsal entry of retrograde blood supply into scaphoid. And the correct answer is dorsal entry of retrograde blood supply into the scaphoid. As far as the blood supply to the scaphoid bone is concerned, we need to remember two points. The blood supply is retrograde and the blood supply is dorsal. This is because the main blood supply to the scaphoid enters through the non-articular dorsal ridge at the waist of the bone from the dorsal branch of the radial artery. This accounts for 80% of the blood supply of the scaphoid. But there is a volar supply too. A separate volar arterial branch to the scaphoid enters the tubercle and gives about 20 to 30 percent of the scaphoid's blood supply and this is mainly to the distal portion. Question number 7. The thumb has the following pulleys for the flexor pollicis longus tendon. Two cruciate pulleys and one oblique pulley or two annular pulleys and one oblique pulley or three annular pulleys and two oblique pulleys or two annular pulleys and one cruciate pulley. And the answer is two annular pulleys and one oblique pulley. The retinacular component consists of three pulleys. The A1 pulley, the oblique pulley and the A2 pulleys. The A1 pulley is located over the metacarpophalangeal joint of the thumb, the oblique pulley over the proximal phalangeal region and the A2 pulley over the interphalangeal joint. Question number 8. In FDP avulsion injury, when the FDP tendon retracts into the palm with disruption of the vincular system, it is classified as Lady Packer type 1, Lady Packer type 2, Lady Packer type 3A, Lady Packer type 3B. The correct answer is Lady Packer type 1. In type 1 avulsion, the FDP tendon is retracted to the palm. This happens because of the rupture of both the vinculum longus and the brevis of the flexor digitorum profundus. Hence, it is free from all attachments and can retract up to the palm. There is no attachment of any bony segment from the terminal phalanx. In type 2 FDP avulsion also, there is no bony segment attached to the avuls tendon, but the vinculum longus is attached. So, the tendon retracts only up to the level of the neck of the proximal phalanx region. In type 3 avulsion, there is a large avulsion fracture from the terminal phalanx. Hence, it prevents the tendon from retracting and the tendon end stays at the distal interphalangeal joint region. In type 4 injury, there is an osseous fragment and there is an avulsion of the tendon. So, it is a double avulsion. Question number 9. Which of the following anatomic structures is associated with cubital tunnel syndrome? Ligament of struthers, arcade of struthers, arcade of frost, fascia of Osborne. And the correct answer is the fascia of Osborne. The ligament of struthers can cause median nerve compression. The arcade of struthers can cause ulnar nerve compression at the level of the arm and the arcade of frost can cause radial nerve compression. The arcade of struthers was first described in 1973 by Cade. It refers to thickening of the brachial fascia from the medial intermuscular septum 
to the medial head of the triceps brachii muscle at a variable distance above the medial humeral epicondyle. This can cause compression of the ulnar nerve. This arcade of Struthers differs from the Struthers ligament which was described by John Struthers in 1854. This consists of a fibrous band from a bone spur located on the anteromedial surface of the lower third of the humerus, otherwise known as the supracondylar process, to the medial humeral epicondyle. This can cause compression of the median nerve and the brachial artery. The cubital tunnel, on the other hand, is an anatomical space that extends from posterior to the medial epicondyle of the humerus through its passage between the two heads of the flexor carpi ulnaris muscle. The roof of this tunnel is formed by the flexor carpi ulnaris fascia and the Osborne's ligament. The floor is formed by the elbow joint capsule which consists of the posterior and transverse bands of the medial collateral ligament and the side walls are formed by the medial epicondyle and the olecranon. The Osborne's ligament is a triangular connective tissue joining the proximal ulnar and humeral heads of the flexor carpi ulnaris. Question number 10. Reverse ETS neurorephy that is end to side neurorephy means co-opting the proximal end of the donor nerve to the side of the recipient nerve. Is this true or false? And the answer is true. This is end-to-end -end neurorephy, ETE neurorephy, where the proximal cut end of the donor is co-opted to the distal cut end of the recipient nerve. This is anti-grade ETS or end-to-side neurorephy, where the distal cut end of the recipient nerve is co-opted to the side of the intact donor nerve. And this is reverse end-to-side neurorephy where the proximal cut end of the donor nerve is co-opted to the side of the intact recipient nerve. I hope you enjoyed this session of the hand surgery quiz, the fun way to learn hand surgery. Please comment on whether you found it difficult or easy and most importantly whether you found it useful. And please scan this QR code with your mobile to instantly access the YouTube channel to see the latest in learning hand surgery.